All right, so this tutorial is going to go over how to use uh, Google Slides to make a gallery walk for a distance learning opportunity. So in this tutorial, I'll go over the template that you'll be given. Um, basically, what you have to do as a teacher and what the students would eventually do um, for their activity. Now, a gallery walk is very unique in that we're going to stay in one spot here. We're going to stay in Google Slides uh, for everything. And it's going to make all of our information stay in one spot. I'm going to show you how to upload a YouTube video or upload a video from your Google Drive. I'm going to show you how to use uh, voice memos to provide discussions um, and where we can put a discussion board within this activity. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how to search Google while staying in Google Slides. All right, the first slide of this template, this is our direction slide. This slide will not go away, uh, but it will be modified by you. So there are five parts to this activity. Uh, the first part is narrative. This is where you're gonna enter your directions or a set of questions or any text that gives students a background to the activity. So this is really what they're going to have to get started. From there, you're gonna ask students to do some type of research. It might just be research to answer the set of questions. You might ask them to go out to YouTube and find a video that's relating to a certain topic or that will inform them about a topic. Or they might go to a website and you might ask them to show where they got this information. So they might have to post a YouTube video or a video from their Google Drive or they might have to give you the URL of a website. The next step is the engagement activity or the creation phase. So this is what you have to decide. You have to decide what you want the students to complete here to show that they understand the information. So this can be done either on their slide or in some cases they might go to Google Docs or another Google slide or Google drawings to complete a task in which case they can just share the URL on their slide that will allow students to view what they've created. The next uh, part is sharing their activity. Uh, and I kind of just went over that. That's them sharing their activity on their Google Slides so their peers can look at it. And the last thing is collaboration and feedback. So it is pretty cool that in Google Slides, we can have a little discussion uh, board going on. It's not a traditional discussion board, but it is still pretty cool. Because if we work in this view rather than presentation view, we have this space down here that's going to allow us to uh, create a discussion. So I'm going to go over this uh, using an example slide, uh, kind of how to add the videos and how to doctor up the slides. Uh, this might be a good resource to share with your students uh, so they understand how to do it as well. All right, before I go into the example slide, I want to just show you that uh, each slide is numbered. So it goes from 1 to slide 25, and it asks the student to put their name at the top. Uh, the reason why I do this is so uh, it gives you the opportunity to post your roster and assign everyone a number if you want, or you can just tell the students to claim their slide by putting their name at the top. Now there's a revert, uh, there's a version history, uh, which I'll show you how to do in a little bit. Um, so if you're worried about uh, students manipulating other students' slides, we can check that out later and I'll show you how to do that. So this is my example slide. I'm John Doe in this example. All right, and on our directions, uh, we had our narrative and it asked us to basically uh, discover, research uh, the Allied powers in the World Wars uh, and provide a video that gives you the information or that teaches you about the Allied powers. So we could easily just add a YouTube video here or a video from our Google Drive by going to insert and then video. Now we can, if we have the URL of the video, we can just put it right here and then search for it. Here's our Google Drive. We can get it from our Google Drive, or you could just type in this search bar for World War II Allied Powers, and I hit search. These um, 
examples come up. And if I like this one, I'll click on it, I'll select it, and I'll put it into the uh, slides presentation. I could resize it and position it where I want. All right, so that was pretty easy. Now, you could do the same thing for a photo or any type of a picture. So let me show you how to do that. There's a neat uh, little uh, tool here that not a lot of people know about, and that's Explore. And that brings up an omni box here or search box and that will allow you to search for whatever you want so uh, what if i did allied powers uh, map okay and i hit enter now it's going to show me all the web options but in this case i want the images or if i already have this picture in my drive i could go to drive but i don't so i'm going to go here and then I'm going to look for a map that shows the allied powers. Let's just say that I like this one right here. I hit the plus button that uh, shows up when you hover over and it brings it right in to your presentation. Okay, so that's how you would add a picture. I'm going to put that up there for now. Uh, the last thing, if a student works on uh, any type of like a Google Doc, a sheet, a slide, drawing, anything like that. Um, each one of these apps within Google has the shared button, so they can hit share. They could get a shareable link by clicking on that, and it's copied to the clipboard. And then what I would do is just make a text box, throw it in my slide. Uh, you could hit right click and paste, and there it is and then hit the hyperlink button and that's going to turn it into a hyperlink so that will share um, their resource with their student uh, population their peers so now the student has completed their slide hopefully it looks better than this i was just showing you how to bring everything in um, now we're on our last piece we're on collaborate and provide feedback so notice underneath each one of these slides is add speaker notes. If you click in there, uh, we could type whatever we want. And since this whole presentation is shared with everyone and they can uh, edit the presentation, um, they can come down and they can add to this. So in the directions, I always ask them to include their name. All right, so if they go down here, I'm gonna put Eric G. And then I could type whatever response I want to this. Uh, so if I wanted to say, this is um, a great slide. Uh, I really like what you created. Here are two things that I like. Here are two things that you can improve upon. Hey, by the way, I just wanted to let you know that the resource that you used is very clear, but I found one I think that's a little better. Go here and you can you can see if you like this resource better. Now, if I don't want to type all that out, we could go back up to tools and go down to voice type speaker notes. When we click on that, this comes up and we could just click here and speak. Hey, I really like your web uh, page that you selected um, for this project. Uh, your video is also a great resource period i found a better resource at worldalliedpowers.com that you might want to check out period nice work exclamation point when i'm done i just go up there hit that button again notice it typed it out it's not perfect but it's pretty easy going back and uh fixing anything that they really want to doctor up here. All right, but that's an easy way of getting discussion going. So me as John Doe, I might come in here and be like, hey, guess what? I, I took your recommendation. I made these changes. Check it out. Let me know what you think. And then you got dialogue on there. Maybe the teacher hops in there too. So uh, this is a, what I think a great uh, opportunity to try to do something that most students are comfortable with technology-wise, teachers are comfortable with, and it just makes a uh, good discussion piece 
on something that they had to create. If you have any questions, make sure that you reach out to one of the tech coaches and uh, good luck. All right, so I just realized I forgot to show you the uh, version history. This is pretty simple to do. So if you're worried about students uh, kind of overwriting other students' work, what you would do is you would go up to File and you would look at version history. And then you would go to C version history. So notice uh, that really there's only two versions here because I've worked at, on it at two different times. But you look at the total edits. If there are more people working on this, there would obviously be more edits and more people's names, but I was the only one that edited it. This, uh, this slideshow here. So if you want to go through my edits, you just hit the down button and that would tell you who edited it and what time and when and how they edited it. So hopefully that helps you out on version history. Usually if you just state in your directions that you have the ability to see who makes changes to the document or to uh, the slides presentation, that usually eliminates any type of uh, destruction of other people's work. So once again, just reach out to your tech coaches if you have any questions uh, and good luck.